This is the future. Good day, my old and new Kryptonians, and welcome to this channel, and welcome to Fire Marshal. And I am the custodian for Fire Marshal at my place of work. So this will be the first video in a series of uh, videos that I want to make to try and educate you a little bit about what is a Fire Marshal, what does it do and what it means to be a fire marshal. So if you are maybe studying to be one or if your company wants to send you on a course to be one, in this video can be used as a bit of a pre-training to do a little bit of research into what you are getting yourself into. And maybe get some pre-information and get yourself a bit knowledgeable about the subject so that when you do the course it's going to be much easier for you to do. Now this first video it's going to be basic responsibilities of a fire marshal. If you want to get a very short summary of what this video is about, you're going to have to go straight to the end of the video. So let's begin. A fire marshal is someone who has been legally appointed in his section by the supervisor that is in charge of that section. So you might be wondering what is your actual responsibilities as a fire marshal. Well, here we go. Number one. As a fire marshal, it is important that you do inspections of all firefighting equipment in your section monthly. You need to keep record of that inspections that you have done for yourself as well as for audit purposes. It is important for you to know what is the condition of the equipment that's in your area. You need to know it because your colleagues are also going to use that equipment. Just because you are a fire marshal doesn't mean that you are the only one who's going to use that equipment. Anyone in your area that is trained to use equipment is going to use it in a case of an emergency. It is important for you to know whether the equipment is easily available, easily accessible, is the location where they are stored easy to open up or to get to. For example, like a hose reel that is situated within a closet or a cupboard. Number two, did you know that a fire extinguisher has an expiry date on it? Or more to say, a service date on it. That's why it's important to service your extinguishers at least once a year and you need to send it for a pressure test every three years. So you might be wondering, what is expiring in an extinguisher? Well, the powder inside can get compacted. The gas can get finished, it can leak out after a while. It's important to send the extinguisher once a year for general maintenance, servicing, refilling of the powder, regassing and so on. By doing that, you can have that extinguisher for up to 5 to 10 years before you need to replace it. DCP extinguisher can normally go for up to 5 years before they need to be totally replaced and CO2 or carbon dioxide extinguishers can go for up to 10 years before you need to replace them. So it's important to send them for servicing every year just to get the maintenance done and also then they can get inspected inside as well as out to make sure that the component is in a good working condition. Number three, signages. It is important for you to change all faded and damaged signs that's in your area. Now we're talking about firefighting signs, okay? like these ones. They indicate to your personnel what type of equipment is situated where. If the sign is not kept in a good condition, then how do you expect anyone to know where to run to in an emergency to get the equipment they need? Always think of the odd visitor that comes to visit your section or workshop or area or office. They come from outside, they don't know where your equipment is, so it will be nice for them to be able to see the signs so they can know where to go to it directly. Number four, you as a fire marshal need to facilitate a fire escape drill or fire drill every six months. And you need to keep a record of that fire drill for audit purposes. You need to know whether the people in your section, firstly, 
know what the alarm sounds like. Do they know how to evacuate? Do they know where to evacuate? Do they know what to do once they get where they are going to? Do they know the shortest and safest route to use in a case of an evacuation? Can they evacuate within five minutes or less? Obviously, depending on the size of the building and the size or the amount of people that is in that section. Now we will be handling all of these points in much more detail in the up and coming videos as we go along. So don't stress about it too much. Number five, always keep your notice boards up to date. It is very important to keep a notice board up to date because remember those pesky visitors? If they come in and they see a board, some people like to go and stare at them and see what is written on a board, especially if they wait for someone. So what do you need on that board? It'll be nice if you have a floor plan on the board. A floor plan of the building, section or floor that you are on. Because on the floor plan they normally show you exactly where the firefighting equipment can be located and where you are at that moment. Also have your emergency numbers on the board and they must be up to date. So that in case of this emergency, the guy or anyone else knows who to call if there's a fire or something. Always have photographs, nice big ones, A4, of the people on the board that's responsible for safety, medical aid and fire marshal. So your safety representative, your first aider and your fire marshal will have the little photo on the board. So that if moi, the visitor, comes there and there's an emergency, I at least know who to look for if I'm looking for someone. I will know your face. I won't run around like a headless chicken looking for someone to assist me. You will know exactly what the person looks like. <laughs> you know. And that is that guys. Short and sweet. That is your main responsibilities. So as promised, short summary. One, do monthly inspections and keep a record of your inspections done. Two, do a fire drill every six months and keep a record for audit purposes. Send firefighting equipment for servicing and repairs every year. Check and replace faded fire signs if need to or faded. And lastly, keep your notice board up to date. So that's that guys. The boring stuff is over. But that is that for this week. I hope you learned a little bit something about responsibilities of a fire marshal. So what are we up to for next week? Next week, you have to subscribe to my channel to find out. We're going to be talking about fire behavior. And I can promise you, you will learn something that you never knew about a fire. So, if you guys are interested, remember to subscribe to this channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And uh, until next week then, guys. Cheers. Hey guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Give me a thumbs up because it will really help out this channel. And feel free to drop a comment. Then something new for you all, there is now a Facebook page, so feel free to follow me on my Facebook group. We will be discussing behind the scene features and videos that I have done. Also, don't forget to go to my website at www.cripzone.co.za where you can go straight to my podcasts if you want to by clicking on the podcast icon you'll be taken straight to the anchor podcast page where I do my podcast and remember when you go to my youtube page there will be a place where you can subscribe to my channel um, and remember if you have any comments please feel free to drop me an email and on my youtube front page there is now a paypal donation button where you can feel free to donate to this channel to help it grow and to help to support me thanks for watching and until next time cheers